So we will go through these three types of functions, if statements. So you see how it works. Just define, we define something, and then if that value is less than or greater than whatever the condition you have, we can have less than, greater than, less than, or less than or equal to, greater than, equal to, you can have exactly equal to, okay, and then what if the value is true, and then what is the value if it's wrong, if it's not true, and then you can print it. Can we have more else here? Can we have more if and more else? Yes, we can have as many as we want actually. But let's uh, keep it for now like this. We, if we understand the simple form, that's okay. And then you have for loop here. So how does this, this for work? So we have h sequence from one to eight, okay? So h is a variable which will have values from one to eight. Then here we say s is a like s is a kind of vector and then blank vector. Why why we define it as blank? Because this blank will be filled up by our function here. Okay? So we say that for i in 1 is to 8. So here we have 1 to 8. So for i in 1 is to 8, s i the value of s which will be filled here from i i is 1 to 8 should be multiplied with 10 h i multiplied with 10 this uh, 1 to 8 this comes here h when i say h i that's when h counts from 1 to 8 but we know that here we have 1 to 8 right so that's why we define 1 to 8 okay here for i in 1 to 8 for all the s, h of i should be multiplied with 10. What do you what do you think we will get? We'll get 10, 20, yeah, 30, 40, something like that. Right? Okay, I haven't tried it, but let's say, as I said, if I am right, what if I make it 9? Will it crash? It gives us an A because. 1 is to i, ninth value is not here in our age, right? So that's why it gives a an a. Yeah, just good to see what happens, right? So we should normally make sure that what the range we mentioned here should be same as the range we have here, okay? And then while loop. What is while loop? So we want to say that give us some value as long as this condition is out there. So let's say i equals to 1, right? We define i with 1 while i is less than 6. So as long as i is less than 6, give us i plus 1. So for how long i equal to less than 6? Up to 5, right? And then print i. Let's see what we get. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 here, right? i is 1 to 5, so 1 plus 1, 2 plus 1, right? What if we write 10? Why are we getting only 1? Yeah, so the first time i is less than 1, and then we add 10, and then we already have 11, which is not less than 6, right? Which we mentioned here, i should be less than 6. So the value of i the first time is 11. That's why we're getting only 1. Are you following? Let's say I change the value here to 20. While i, so i is 1, that's okay. Then while i is less than 20, print, uh, then i equals to i plus 10, print i. What do you think? What are the values we will get? First time, the first time i is 1, right? So we get i plus 1, 11. So second time, my i is 11, right? So, which is less than 20? So, 11 plus 20, 21, right? But then again, I compare my i value with i20. But 21 is not less than 20. So now it will not report anything. So now it should report 
11 and 21 with this condition let's see if it works right so here so using this kind of things you can write your own function you know you can actually automate a lot of the things so let's say we define a function here Daniel equals to function of height and weight. These names you can give anything, you know. A variable. It doesn't have to. It's it's. We're not dealing with dependent or independent, but it has to be a variable. Just any variable, okay. So this is actually we are not really doing any statistics here. Uh, these are the things we use to program like basics for when you think about machine learning let's say I want to do something like in my bank account when I have more than 20,000 kroner send the surplus to savings account I want to just automate this function it's just simple you just say that okay banks can introduce these things I think do we have many banks doing this kind of things do we? Okay, we don't have the if, right? But like, let's say bank can provide a service like this. That okay, if you just mention that whenever you have more than ten thousand kroner, whatever extra comes into your account goes to your savings account, right? You just use a function like this. So simple, right? Exactly, this if function is all you need, or while function. As long as it's less than ten thousand, it goes. To, uh, no, as long as it is higher than 10,000, it goes to savings account. Very simple function, right? So that's what we can do to automate things. Uh, but we also are, want to automate, like uh, when we think about these autonomous technologies, ships, cars, all these things, how they work. They get input from sensors, right? When the sensor value is less than this, it gives this action. If it is higher than this, it gives this action. Just simple functions like this but not so simple a bit more advanced okay but that's the logic so here yeah we are having a function daniel function of height and weight you can have any name any name any variable name okay and here we are saying in our function the value of height will be divided by 10 then it will be squared which we call h and it will return us weight divided by h it's just a function okay it will return us whatever so now what we are doing we are just saying okay height equals to 180 and weight equals to 80 what will we get we will get this one weight divided by h you know there are so, there are things like bmi ratio or something like that we calculate based on height and weight right I can just put this a function like this in my website. People can just put their height and weight, click, and they get their BMI. Maybe this is a BMI ratio or something like that. So you see, this is how we can automate function. It's very easy to put it in a website or in a database, this kind of things. So let's say we select this. So let's say if we select one by one, what happens? First, you click, nothing happens. No, it actually covers all of it when because of the function when you have a function command it will count whatever e is within in the second brackets after that okay and then you put a value you get 24.8 but maybe there is another person let's say me i don't really know how much but i'm just putting some numbers uh, more than 70 I guess I don't have to run the function again I just run this value okay I, I put this first time in the website or in, in somewhere and next time everyone comes up and just modifies these values here and runs this and we get the value okay so it's like we are automating things any value Okay, so that's how functions and this kind of things work.